Who's been drawing dicks? Okay, so my last robot didn't exactly work as intended. I'm still depressed. But you know what? Maybe we just need to take a different approach to this. I read something the other day that said, your environment has an effect on your mood. So how can I change my environment? I've been spending the last year here because of quarantine. Maybe it's time we make a change and actually add some art to the mixture. But let's face it, art is way too expensive. I mean, I'm an American college student. Do you really think I can afford to buy art? And me, painting? <laughs> Good luck with that. I'm a computer science major. Do you think I really know how to paint? But luckily, I don't need to know how to paint. I just need to tell a computer how to paint. And that's why we're gonna be using the NXT Mindstorms NXT block thing from Lego. It's upside down. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Cameron, Lego, child's toy. What do you mean you're gonna use this in order to actually create art? This thing is insanely powerful. I've seen this thing used to make an ATST walker, whatever this thing is. It can even solve Rubik's cubes on its own. Crazy thing is, this is just a second generation. There's been like multiple new generations of this thing. And I think this one came out in like 2005, 2006. I didn't exactly bother to check, that's future me editing this video's problem. But I think I've had it about that long, I'm not really sure. But speaking of having it that long, I accidentally left like six AA batteries inside of this thing. You guys know what happens to batteries when you leave them inside a battery terminal for too long. They end up corroding and uh, leaking a battery acid and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go and clean this up, that way I'm not working with a fire hazard. So let's get started. Here's what it looks like so far. All I'm doing right now is just scratching off all of the uh, corrosion, all the white bits you get. There's a little bit of blue bits in there too. Now this audio is gonna sound fantastic because I'm scratching this through all the way. We're gonna move on to this little dental tool here and just kind of pick away at it. That could be a new instrument. Okay. So I think I got a majority of the corrosion out of this thing. All that corrosion stuff, that's just a base. So we're gonna be using something like an acid. For example, this lemon that I've got, we're just gonna put a little drop onto the corroded area and wait for a reaction to happen. I should note, this is basic chemistry. I nearly failed chemistry in high school. They should go well. I'm gonna just pour a little li bit of lemon juice just to see what's gonna happen. See, look at that. Look at that, all that fizzing up and stuff. The base, the uh, the corrosion is reacting with the uh, lemon juice, or in this case, an acid. And it's uh, neutralizing it. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on with that. And then I'm just gonna clean it all with uh, water and stuff like that. You can start to hear it actually. That's kind of cool. I'd show you it, but um, I don't want to tilt the lemon into the, uh, the area where the computer is. New science could be fun, not me in 10th grade. That is interesting. Can't tell what's happening. Oh, it's going away. That's awesome. You know, I think that's just straight up dirt as well, to be honest. Because look, I just turned my Q tip brown. Ooh, wow, that's a lot of bubbles. I think we're all good. I'm going to try and turn this thing on. If it doesn't work, I'll just buy a motor and an H bridge off of like Banggood or AliExpress or something. But let's hope this works so I don't have to. All right, I'm back at my desk. Let's see if this actually works. It works! It works! Oh, that's great! Awesome! This thing works. I'm super excited about that. Man, it's been a while since I've seen this thing. Yeah, this is awesome. I can go through all the buttons and stuff like that. I can go through the menu. Desperately attempting to get into frame here. You can see the original program I wrote for this thing. So it's actually running right now. I have no idea what it's doing. Cool. Well, all I need to do now is just um, find a USB-A cable right here. I need to find a USB-A cable so that I can actually hook this thing up to the computer. So 
I'm going to show you guys this really neat little trick I like to use when I'm um, organizing all of my cables and stuff. You can see I've got the USB-A cable in here. So the first step we're going to do with this is we're just going to... I can't believe that worked. Anyway, so now we have our USB-A cable. We're going to go ahead and connect that into the Mindstorms NXT block and then we should be able to hook it up to the computer. So this would be the part of the video where I would go ahead and download the coding environment for this little bad boy. But there are two problems with that. First problem, I don't have the CD that came with the box. Second problem, even if I did have the CD, I don't have a CB, CB, I don't have a CD port on my computer to actually run it through. But I didn't come this far just to not be able to work with the Mindstorms block. And thankfully, LEGO understands that people still work with these. So they made all of their uh, coding environments downloadable on this link that will appear on screen right now. And so all I have to do is just go to that link, scroll down, and then find which coding environment corresponds to the block that I've got. Now before I do any coding and stuff like that, I need to actually build a robot around this thing. That way, you know, I have something to code. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get to building. What follows is a brief construction montage. <laughs> you enjoyed this brief construction montage okay good news we finished the hardware yeah now you're probably thinking to yourself Cameron what is this huge hunk of plastic and how is it gonna be able to draw anything hold on I'm getting there just be paid you know how there are those huge cranes that load cargo onto cargo ships all the shipping containers and stuff like that those cranes are super powerful. They're able to take the uh, shipping containers off of trucks and then stack them in any height and arrangement they want to using three axes, the X, Y, and Z. You see the crane is able to move up and down the shipping platform and then on top of the crane there is a little grid section for the left and right movement, or in this case the Y coordinate. And from there, there's that crane that actually moves down, picks up the container, and then moves it back up so that it can go to wherever it needs to go. In this case, that would be the Z coordinate. We're kind of taking the same approach with this, except on a much smaller scale. The X coordinate on this is going to be the bottom section, which just moves it forward and backward. And then we have a little platform on top for the Y movement that moves left and right. Now that holds the pen, in this case the Z coordinate, because it's essentially a pen down, pen up movement. So with that, we can draw a whole bunch of crazy shapes using only Lego. Let's go and do that. I just feel the same. Thank you for watching. This project was actually really fun. I had a lot of fun working with it. If you want to build one of these things, I would actually advise against it. Mostly because look at all the batteries that I had to go through. Look at all these. This is like 18 batteries. I went through all those. Don't build this. It's not worth it.
But anyway, it was nice to be able to do some physical computing for a little bit. I always tend to work in um, just like software development and stuff like that, just building programs. So this was a nice change. But yeah, if you like the video, like it. Um, I'd like to thank all 21 of my subscribers for staying subscribed. If you're not subscribed, don't worry. You can subscribe. You don't have to subscribe. It's not like my self-worth depends on numbers or anything. But yeah, thank you for watching.